Hello, I'm with uh, Sumit Anand and he'll be singing uh, Dhrupad Alap in Rag Yaman for us. What are the stylistic elements of Dhrupad and particularly those of the gharana you belong to? See, uh, first of all, Dhrupad is the ancient most form of Indian classical music that is still in practice. If we look at the origin and history of Dhrupad, it dates back to around 15th century. That's when you have a formal documentation of Drupad happening for the first time. Though before that also there have been, uh, you know, things written and documented about things which are related to Drupad. So it is believed to have evolved from a music form called Chand and Prabhand Gayan, which was which again dates back to 12th and 13th century. Okay, so in a Drupad style. Uh, when it started off, of course, it was purely for meditative and uh, even religious purposes, bhakti. Okay, And that's why when you spiritual and religious and meditative purposes. And that's why if you look at most of the older original compositions, they are in praise of the Almighty. Yeah, uh, But as it progressed and uh, from so, you know, a confined set of people, it moved into the court of Mughal emperors and then it became popular even among masses, a lot of newer compositions were also added in local dialects like Braj Bhasha, you know, so some of the more recent ones you will find in Braj Bhasha, which is usually about Lord Krishna and Radha. So that's the very, very brief history, I would say, of Thrupad, can't do justice to the subject in a minute. Uh, about the stylistic element, say a typical Thrupad performance starts with an elaborate alap. Now, what is an alap? Alap is basically bringing alive the rag. The, the, the rag that we have in Hindustani classical music, they are all in Dhrupad as well. I mean, the Hindustani classical background is the same for Dhrupad or Khayal mm. or any other form of Indi Indian classical music. Now, alap is usually done in three or four stages. Uh, the three stages are basically alap, which is... Uh, uh, yeah, and the, the difference between the three is the first one has no pulse or no tempo in it, okay? So there's no rhythmic uh, thing going on, yeah? So it's very, very calm, serene, pristine. That's where we try to bring alive the rag. The next part is called Jod, which has a pulse in it, and it's almost like a madhyale, so mid-tempo. And followed by what you call Jhala, which is like a fast tempo alap. Yeah, and this is the practice that you will see a lot of instrumentalist practicing today in their alap section, which is actually a Drupad style of uh, presentation and then it is followed by a composition in Dhrupad we uh, primarily sing in Tal like Chautal which is a 12 beat cycle or Dhamar which is a 14 beat cycle or a Sultal which is a 10 beat cycle which I will be singing for you today or even Tivra a 7 beat cycle and there are a few more which are not as popular but primarily these 3-4 are the Tal in which it is sung. Mm -hmm. Now coming to my gharana I belong to Darbhanga tradition of Dhrupad, Dhrupad music. Darbhanga is a place in Bihar mm -hmm. and uh, Darbhanga tradition owes its linkage and allegiance to the Senya tradition. Now Senya is a music tradition which traces its origin to legendary Tansenji. So our forefathers actually learned in that lineage. They learned from actually the maternal grandson of Tansenji. Yeah, and that's how the tradition is being passed on in an oral Guru Shishri Parampara way, Jen, I think I, I'm the ninth or tenth <laughs> in line. My grandfather, my great grandfather, my maternal grandfather, my Guruji, his Guruji, they're all very, very renowned names uh, in the field of Drupad. And we also have a title of Maliks given to us. So sometimes we are popularly known as Darbhanga Malik tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's about the tradition. What we sing uh, in Drupad style, there are different Vanis. Right? So there are four actually, Gohar, Nohar, Khandar and Dagarwani. Okay? So we, uh, what we sing predominantly is the Goharwani, which is also called the Shudwani. Okay? And that is the tradition of Tansenji. Mm -hmm. And besides that, there are some compositions in Khandar and Noharwani as well. But Goharwani lays a lot of emphasis on uh, the musical elaboration. So typically you will find the compositions set to a slower tempo. The tempo is not going to be very fast. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on poetry. Mm. So the poetry is very rich. Mm. And, but at the same time, it is intertwined with a lot of 
musical richness in it. So if I was to explain to you, you know, as to how it pans out, I'm sure you'll see that in the in the uh, performance. But basically, we use mind and gamak. These are the stylistic elements of Thrupad to embellish a performance. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say you're very blessed to actually be in that family which follows, which has kept the tradition of Dhrupad alive because unfortunately we do not get to see much of it in today's uh, scenario, you know. And it's been going on since. It's one of the most ancient forms of uh, Hindustani classical vocal music. So I'm really looking forward to this session today and uh, well, you know. <laughs> Just enthrall us, I can all, that's all I can say. I'm also very excited to be here and perform for others. Thank you. So we'll just set up everything for you and then we can begin. Yeah? Thank you. Nairi Rai, 
Yeah. 